so we're doing types of characters. We're almost done with your notes. So this will be a good tool for the rest of the school year. So our major character is our main character. Just another name for the, the, the character that the story focuses on. It's about me. Um, number two, the minor character. Minor character is a character who takes part in the action, but he or she's not the focus. The character depends on the character from number one. I depend on you, okay? Um, number three, blank or blank is a character in the story who does not change or grow. So we have a static or a flat character. And the way this person acts can influence what happens in the events, conflict. Okay, number four is probably the one you'll see the most and be the most familiar. Blank is a character who changes throughout the story. It may be an emotional, a mental, or a physical change. We call these characters dynamic. I mean, if you think of dynamite, when dynamite goes off, it changes. Um, so dynamic characters, depending on what happens to them, changes the events in the story and changes them as a person. Okay, on to the next page. Number five, blank is a character who is fully developed. They take on realistic identity and complex characteristics. He or she is three-dimensional, and we call that a round character. So if the character seems like he could be a friend of yours, or maybe he has traits that remind you of you, then he, would be a round, he or she would be a round character. Okay, number six, blank is when the author describes the character in detail. This is called direct characterization. Um, a really good example that we're going to read this year is The Outsiders. Because in chapter one, Essie Hinton describes the, the greasers who are one of the groups in the story in detail. She talks about each greaser's personality, physical traits, and family relationships. And the last one on this page for characters. Blank is when the author makes you figure out the character's personality and traits. You can use speech and their actions. We call this indirect characterization. You basically get to be, you kind of get to be a detective and you use clues that are given to you in the story to figure out what the character thinks, how he or she acts. Okay. I think we can go on because we're on to one more page. I'll just kind of put climax chart with the characters so we can wrap this up. All right, so the climax chart is basically how we create the story. It's the events that make up the story. So we're always going to start on the left. And if you think about it, when you're going up a mountain, it increases. Same with the story. As we get farther into the story, the events and the action gets more intense gets more interesting a lot of times. So down at the bottom on the left hand side, we're going to start with our exposition. Exposition is basically like the intro. We meet the characters and the setting of the story. Okay, then as we advance up the climax chart or up the mountain, we have, these are the events that begin to lead up to the turning point. The problem is introduced. This is the rising action. We may have more than one problem, but this is where the first problem usually takes place. The turning point is the high point of the story, and this is where we call the climax. Now, I just want to say this. I know my chart only shows one high point or one climax, but in a full-length novel or in a story, you may have more than one climax. Like, for example, and I hate to keep going back to it, but I think it does a really good job, the outsiders do have more than one climax in the story. Okay, so you will see uh, a high point and a turning point and then some events and then another high point, and then some other events that help to solve that problem. So there can be more than one problem, like I said, in the story too. All right, once we get to the climax, we start going down the mountain, and we have our falling action. 
And these are the events that are helping to end the story and help solve that problem. And the last part is the end of the story. The problem is solved. We call that our resolution. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in some stories, we may not necessarily have a resolution because we have a series, so they may leave us hanging because we're going on and we're gonna find out more information in the next book of a series. But um, for the most part, most stories have a res resolution or an ending to it. So um, this concludes all of our literary element notes. Um, please feel free to go back at any time and look over these. If you can't find your notes page, come see me at any time and I can get you another one. Um, and like I said, please feel free to stop, rewind and go back. And if you have any questions, come see me. Thanks.